Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ryan Ride Mechanic channel. How the heck are you doing today? All right, today's episode, I wanted to talk about worker safety. So let's get into it. Now get ready. Here we go. Welcome to the Ryan Ride Mechanic channel. If this is your first time here, make sure you like and subscribe. Do all that stuff downstairs. It does help me out and I do appreciate it. Okay. Accidents can happen to anyone at any time. Amusement rides can be dangerous, but they're mainly dangerous for the workers who deal with them day in and day out. Amusement ride workers are constantly under pressure to keep the ride running and the line moving swiftly. Park management knows that a smooth running ride is a ride that's making money and bringing people in that front gate. Amusement ride workers sometimes develop the sense to cut corners and make things go a little smoother or easier for them throughout the day. When an operator cuts a corner to save time, they bypass and give up some amount of control whether they perceive it or not. Maintenance can also do the same thing, sometimes shaving large chunks of time on their inspection. Guests can place themselves in harm's way also by trying to save time. We've all heard this. A guest will say, I can't wait for the park to close to get my cell phone back from the infield. I need it now. Manufacturers build safety into the rides. Where a pin can break, they make the pin larger. Where a restraint cylinder might fail, they'll put two restraint cylinders in its place. Where a hitch can fail, they'll put a secondary safety cable across the hitch so if there is a failure, the train won't catastrophically come apart. When a ride starts up, they add bells or sirens around the area to alert people in the area that the ride is about to be put into motion. If there's moving components or a complex piece of machinery operating close to people, they put guards in front of it to prevent people from directly interacting with that and possibly injuring themselves. But not all safety items are in the manufacturer's control. How? Here's an example. In the manual to your car in the garage, the manual states that your tires shall be inflated to the proper pressure, have complete and adequate tread depth, and be free from defects. The manufacturer of your car states that it's unsafe to operate your car if any of those items are not maintained. Have you ever driven a car with low tire pressure? Or a bald spot on the tread? Or maybe a cut tire? People generally do this to save time or to save money. The manufacturer can tell you not to do these things. The rest is up to you. What do the following accidents have in common, and what can we learn? Number one, 2019, IAPA reports an operator dies in France after being struck by a mouse ride while receiving lost items. Number two, in 2015, Cedar Point, park guest jumped over the fence to retrieve a cell phone, then is struck by the raptor while retrieving a cell phone. Number three, in 2012, Six Flags Iran, Montreal, Quebec, maintenance worker struck by a train of the vampire roller coaster. Number four, in 2011, Disney's Animal Kingdom, primeval world mechanic in break zone is struck by a vehicle. Number five, in 2009, Universal Studios maintenance workers struck by a train of the Dueling Dragons roller coaster. Number six, in 2008, Six Flags Over Georgia, a 17-year-old park guest is killed by the Batman roller coaster train. Number seven, in 2008, Six Flags Magic Mountain, a 20-year-old park guest trying to retrieve a lost hat. Number 8. In 2007, Disney's Animal Kingdom, Primeval World, operator moved to an adjacent zone and was struck by a vehicle after falling from a restricted area of the ride platform. Number 9. Number 9. Number 9. Number 9. 2004, Six Flags Great America, raging Cajun mechanic struck by a vehicle while crossing under the tracks. 10. In 2002, Six Flags Over Georgia Atlanta employee killed in restricted area under the Batman coaster. 11. In 1998, Paramount's Great America, Santa Clara, California, park guest struck and killed by rider's foot after entering a restricted area under the ride to retrieve his wife's hat after she lost it while riding. Number 12. 1995, Moray's Piers, Wildwood, New Jersey, Park employee picking up trash in a restricted area was struck and killed by a rider's foot. Lucky number 13. 1993, Bush Gardens, Williamsburg, 
an employee was struck in the head by a popular suspended roller coaster. Number 14. 2024. Kings Island. A guest was struck by the Banshee inverted coaster searching for a lost article. Number 15. In 2015, California's Great America flight deck inverted coaster mechanic dies while retrieving a cell phone. These accidents demonstrated a lack of physical control around the ride area and operating area. Controlling rides safely is the first line of defense when it comes to ride accidents. Interestingly enough, the manufacturer of a ride does not typically place safety systems in place to guard against these accidents. The manufacturers generally say to put up fencing around the ride so that the low spots can't be reached during operation. The operating park is actually the one on the hook to develop infield fencing, gates, locks, procedures, and policies to allow workers into these areas only when it's safe to do so. It's a very complex subject and requires a lot of attention on this to actually make it happen. The park employs or hires engineers to look at this problem and come up with safe solutions for smooth ride operations above and beyond what the ride manual might say to do. For example, one of the biggest hazards of a ride not necessarily caused by the ride is noise. It prevents operators working on the platform from effectively communicating problems and other situations that arise to other operators. So parks had to develop hand signals so that operators could communicate safely without having to hear what's going on. Can you hear me now? Worker safety is often dependent on energy isolation when working on or around rides. The energy isolation of a ride is also referred to as lockout tagout or LOTO for short. In the United States, Occupational Health and Safety Administration sets the requirements in the Code of Federal Regulation CFR 29 Part 1910.147, Control of Hazardous Energy. I'll leave a link to 1910.147 in the description. This standard is for methods of controlling hazardous energy, such as electrical, pneumatic, unexpected startup, gravitational, stored energy in pneumatic tanks, batteries, etc., as well as stored potential energy, for example, during the evacuation process of a vehicle that is stopped while cresting the hill at the top of the ride. Take a look at this clip where the ride was locked out for evacuation, but the potential energy of the train was not blocked. They unloaded the bottom of the train first, causing the heavier side to roll forward unintentionally. This is often considered a complex lockout as there are multiple techniques needed to safely de-energize the ride. In this case, there was not only lockout required, but there was blocking of stored energy required as well. In addition to turning off and locking the main disconnect, the vehicle on a crested lift hill must be blocked out or tied off to prevent vehicle motion during the evacuation process. This procedure will not only protect the employees, but it will protect the patrons as well. Servicing tasks. A lot of lockout tagout procedures are developed specifically for maintenance, which typically end up servicing the ride. But servicing can be done by lots of different people for lots of different reasons. Some service tasks include things like this. Replacing a motor on the ride. Replacement of electrical control devices inside the ride. Repairing a conveyor belt. Replacing a gearbox. Repairing a brake. For tasks that are not maintenance-based, that take place during normal operation of the ride and that are necessary for the operation, they are routine, repetitive, and managed by a safety design process called Operation and Use Risk Assessment, or 
O-U-R-A, in the European and International Amusement Ride Standards. In the U.S., ASTM F2291, standard practice for design of an amusement ride or device uses the term ride analysis requiring engineers and amusement ride designers to consider the safe location, position, safe distance, minimum gaps, maximum gaps, and ergonomics to eliminate or reduce the severity of harm to the employees. The standard also identifies specific devices, safety functions utilized by the control system to stop hazardous motion when an employee inadvertently performs an unsafe act. For example, let's use something like a hold to run device. Operators working on the roller coaster platform each must press a hold to run push button to initiate train movement in and out of the station area. Should an operator inadvertently leave their position during vehicle movement, the control system will automatically start deaccelerating the train and it will come to a stop. Vehicle movement can be initiated again after all operators that have this device are pressing their buttons. Rides that are classified as flat rides, rides that rotate, etc., also use a hold to run device, but this device can be a foot pedal or a push button. There are differences between roller coaster station area and flat rides that spin. Roller coasters stop quickly in the station, often in a few seconds. Flat rides, on the other hand, take a much longer amount of time to deaccelerate and come back to a zero movement state. For something like roller coasters, things can be placed closer to the ride area since the movement can be stopped easier. Flat rides that rotate do not stop quickly due to this rotation inertia. A hold to run foot pedal may not be enough for a ride that takes one minute to stop as an operator could release a foot pedal but still reach the moving vehicles before they have come to a complete stop. For these type of rides, other measures may be required such as positioning operators behind locked gates or changing the pathway an operator must take to get to the moving ride vehicle. Since the early 1990s, a popular ride design called the inverted or suspended roller coaster came on the amusement park scene. The manufacturers of these rides, such as B&M and Vacoma, utilized unique ride elements where the track dives down towards the ground level, providing a thrilling ride experience to the riders. Although these new ride features were wonderful for the riders' experience on board the train, it posed new risks for the amusement parks and their operators and maintenance personnel as well as guests that might go into these low-lying track areas. A quick search on the internet identifies more than 10 accidents and deaths to employees as well as guests that were caused by these types of roller coasters. The special dive element of a suspended roller coaster makes it appear to a person that these areas are in a safe location to search for their lost articles. The track might be 15 to 20 feet above the ground, making it appear to the person in an area that they are safe. However, the train hangs down eight feet from the track and the rider's legs hang down another two feet below that, no pun intended. Engineers in the amusement industry utilize a device and safety function called a trap key interlock to protect park employees entering these areas to look for lost articles and perform other tasks. The trap key system was developed more than a hundred years ago by the railroad industry to control track switching operations in the French railway system. Upon turning the trap key interlock to the off position, it initiates a vehicle stop command to the control system. System. Let's go over a trap key use. Step 1. Shutting down the roller coaster. Before access to the area under the roller coaster is possible, the roller coaster must first be shut down. This is done with a key switch mounted in the control station. Turning and removing the key from this key switch shuts down the ride and prevents it from moving during the maintenance work. The green master key from the key switch is then placed into the nearby key exchange box. Step 2. The key exchange box. Placing the master key in the key exchange box releases six blue access keys. These access keys allow access to the six doors leading to the maintenance zone. The key exchange box ensures that the access keys can only be obtained when the roller coaster is shut down. Step 3. 
access and safety key. The access key is inserted into the double door lock at the access door and turned, releasing the safety key. You then take the safety key with you into the maintenance zone, preventing anyone from accidentally getting locked in. Step four, leaving the area. After the maintenance is completed and the zone is safely vacated, the safety key is returned to the double door lock on the access door. This locks the door and releases the blue access key, the access key can then be placed back into the key exchange box. Step five, restarting the roller coaster. Once all access keys have been returned to the key exchange box, the master key can then be removed and placed back into the key switch. This allows the staff to safely restart the ride. An important consideration, if the vehicle was just released from the top of the lift hill, the vehicle is free running for a long period of time where the train could take 45 seconds to pass the last danger zone access gate. Engineers account for this long period of time by positioning the trap key interlock near the operator's console. The key is removed where the person must travel to another trap key element called the exchange unit where multiple keys can be released to open multiple gates. The travel time to the exchange unit plus the travel time to the gate is greater than 45 seconds of time it takes the vehicle to pass by that gate. IAPA, or International Association of Amusement Parks and Attractions Safety and Security Committee, has identified these types of devices as the best practice when protecting workers in these types of areas. What about the fatalities, where a guest can climb over these fences and defeat them? These fences have additional features. Some use reduced climbing ability fence or anti-climbing fence. Some have pointed tops to reduce the desire to climb over the fence. ASTM requires a maximum of a four inch gap on the bottom of the fence preventing a small person from climbing under the fence. And we still like to put all sorts of signs on the fences saying, hey, cut your losses, turn back now. Whatever it is inside there is not worth your life. Manufacturers also follow the ASTM, IAPA, and OSHA guidelines in their base ride packages, but it's up to the company who purchased the equipment to do the risk analysis to determine if more safety controls are needed to keep the ride safe. Parks end up doing things over the life of the ride that original manufacturer did not know they were going to do. So the park needs to stay up on keeping their rides up to date and safe. Part of this process is utilizing third party engineers or safety inspectors as an impartial outside safety inspection. This process costs a lot of money, but it's worth keeping the rides and employees safe. This topic is massive, and a lot of people have spent their entire career making sure that everyone that gets on these rides goes home safe, including the people that work with these rides on a daily basis. Honestly, I can't even scratch the surface of this stuff to do it justice. Now, if this all sounds smart and well thought out, well, that's because the majority of this episode was written by an actual ride safety engineer where they are not only great at what they do, but they have an absolute passion for it, keeping guests and workers alike safe day in and day out. They wish not to be named on this video, but the majority of you out there have probably ridden on a ride with their control system safely operating it in the background. I trust them with my life. I trust them with my kids, my wife, my friends. So you know who you are, and thank you for what you've done and what you're doing. We all appreciate you. I'm Ryan the Ride Mechanic. If you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe. Do all that stuff downstairs. I do appreciate it. And give those safety engineers a break. Stay off the air gates.